Alright, how you guys doing? Welcome to this edition of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem right there over on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. How are you guys doing over on Facebook as well as YouTube? What did you guys think about last night's episode of the Hollywood and China Dow? We simulcast with Motorcycle Madhouse Radio WMMRDB the newest uh, project from Insane Throttle. It went pretty damn good, uh, even though that uh, YouTube star, you know, cut out the songs and stuff. That's what was happening, but it was crystal clear over on the radio. Good stuff, good stuff. Today, we're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff. We're going to explore a couple issues that are happening right now. One report from a newspaper as well as uh, some stuff that they're uh, not worrying you. If COVID uh, wasn't bad enough, man, there's been some Ebola outbreaks going on. So we'll discuss that as well. As always, don't forget to uh, hit the uh, like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure that you hit all when hitting that notification bell or you will not be uh, told what's up now if you go in our discord server under the youtube deal you'll be notified all the time never have a problems with it man so get over on our discord server uh but one of the deals that we're going to be talking about today uh the title of the segment is uh there was a reporter that sat down with a member of the Mongols Motorcycle Club. And they were talking about everything going on, and then the reporter turned everything around and said the not-so-sweet reality of bikey gangs on the West Live. And we're going to discuss that as, you know, from their perspective as well as here in the United States. Also, there is something else that we'll be talking about and uh, debating, if you will. Bikey gangs are being uh, changed by recruitments of young, violent men. Yes. We're going to be talking about that as well here in the United States and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, then there's a sad state of affairs coming up where uh, a guy is being charged under a gang law in Georgia and that's one that we mentioned before, where these laws are being used to the extreme. Just look at yesterday's episode where finally the Maricopa County uh, Attorney's Office dropped the gang enhancement charges against those protesters. It seems like, and I hate to say this, that prosecutors that are right-leaning they'll use this on anybody and it also goes to you know i know with uh, what happened on january 6 and stuff they're even thinking about using rico laws on that it's like the abuse of power is just frightening frightening and a lot of mcs and a lot of bikers know firsthand about the abuses of these type of laws. You know, look at the abuses that happened down in Waco, Texas during Twin Peaks where they were just filling forms out, man. It was pre-made freaking forms. And uh, next thing you know, over 177 people were freaking arrested. Their lives destroyed. Their families destroyed. And now they're trying to fight it civilly. And it's getting thrown out left and right. My understanding, anyway. Uh, stuff on that you'd have to talk to uh, Popeye and OG on. But people's lives get destroyed from these so-called tough uh, on crime laws. One thing that they don't do, and I hope you guys uh, sign that position or the petition for that young... Uh, Kid that was uh, murdered and raped and stuffed by that pedophile who's getting out. It seems like they always uh, work in the favor of those kind of people. That ain't fair. It ain't cool anymore. 
and it's time to get involved with your representative and hold their feet to the fire, man. I am so sick and tired of every two or four years they give a crap about you, but during that time, they don't care whatsoever, man. They only care about their own political careers because we do not hold them to account. And then we get stupid laws like these. Sad state of affairs. And by the way, over on the support store, we now have a new shirt. Sad state of affairs on it, man. Everybody's liking that one a lot. Uh, but, you know, some concerning stuff coming out our way. Yes, yes, yes. Our Second Amendment, man, is going to be under attack in a, you know, in a heartbeat coming up. You know, they always use these tragedies to push more gun laws on people. None that would have changed anything. It's these elites on the West and uh, the East Coast that live in these cities that think they can run roughshod on everybody else. That happens, uh, case in point, Illinois. The whole state would be red if it wasn't for Chicago. Chicago controls everything. And they're corrupt as hell in Chicago. You know, over the years, there's been uh, deals where people said, you know what, let Chicago be its own state. We're tired of them. There's been some counties, including my county, that wanted to become a part of Wisconsin. That's how bad it is. And then downstate Illinois, it's just terrible. But they always use these tragedies to push their gun control. Now, you better thank God that uh, the Senate has that 60-vote uh, filibuster deal. Because this can become a reality. Even with people like Joe Manchin, you know, that guy is so back and forth. You don't even, I don't know how West Virginia reelected him. He used to be a freaking actual moderate, but he ain't anymore. Joe Biden marks third anniversary of Parkland shooting with gun control push. President Joe Biden marked February 14th, the third anniversary of the Parkland shooting, by calling on Congress to pass more gun control, like we need it. If you go to Chicago, <laughs> it's, a sh it's a turkey uh, shoot over there. Every single day you can turn on the news and hear about a shooting. And they got some of the toughest gun laws in the country. You know, they'll put the excuse, well, the guns are coming in from neighboring states with less gun control. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You better, you know, check yourself on that statement. Uh, he used a tweet, that, you know, to recount the attack and all that stuff. Uh, but he, rec he concluded... By writing, today I am calling on Congress to enact common sense gun law reforms. You ever notice they always say common sense? Including requiring background checks on all gun sales. Well, basically that happens already. Banning assault weapons and high capacity magazines. Really? Assault weapons, just dressed up deer rifles. Hmm. Because it looks scary to them. High capacity magazines. Eliminating immunity for gun manufacturers who knowingly put weapons of war on the streets. Basically, they want to shut down the gun manufacturers. That way, uh, you know, nobody can buy guns. You know, what is it with these people, man? It, uh, everybody's against these type of policies, but they continue to push them. Because they think they're better than us they know better than us they know better than the american people so why should they listen to us and i like the comeback on it uh the shooter acquired his gun legally and that was according to usa today uh that terminology means he went through a background check so expanding checks from retail alone to retail and private sales would have done nothing just like here in Chicago, 
But that's what they want to do. They want to control you. If you guys haven't seen that yet, something's wrong. But yeah, guys, Second Amendment, man, get on the phone with those uh, legislatures and stuff and uh, say, uh-uh, ain't happening. Uh, sad state of affairs here, man. You know, it's uh, we got COVID-19 uh, going on right now. We be shut down, man, been shut down, isolated the whole nine yards. That should tell us how fast something like this could spread. In the old days, like during the Spanish flu and stuff, there was hardly any freaking travel around the world, man. It was kind of closed off. So all this type of stuff basically stayed where it was. Now you got air travel. You got all kinds of travel where somebody that was in, say, South Africa this morning and was exposed, they just jumped on a flight and went into New York, and they're there by the uh, night, and guess what? It spreads. But Ebola, now that's a different type of freaking uh, thing there. I don't care what you say about COVID-19 and all that stuff. It's the flu, blah, 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 blah. But Ebola, something different, man. If that ever got loose, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Guinea declares new old Ebola epidemic after three dead first cases since 2016. Health officials in Guinea on Sunday confirmed that at least three people have died from Ebola there. The first case is declared since it was one of three West African nations to fight the world's deadliest Ebola epidemic. That ended five years ago. You know. That Bible passage is really starting to come true, huh? With all the pestilences. An additional four people are confirmed with Ebola, according to a statement from the Ministry of Health. All seven positive cases uh, uh, attended the funeral of a nurse uh, on February 1st and later showed Ebola symptoms, including a fever, diarrhea, vomiting. Uh, the government has declared an Ebola epidemic and started uh, contact tracing and isolating suspected cases. It also sent an emergency team to support local teams and has accelerated the procurement of Ebola vaccines from the WHO. Yeah, well, you trust them, don't you? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so those are uh, two things that I wanted to start the show off on. Um, and I think it has to do with how our government operates here in the United States. I don't know how it does in Canada or how it does in Australia, but in the United States, it's becoming more of, and you can tell by the censorship, more of a rogue type of deal against the constitution. You look at some of these laws being passed as far as gang enhancements, how they're being used on the one side to on the other side trying to disarm. The government wants total control of your lives. I have never seen it so bad in my life as it is now. One of the reasons, and I've talked about this, one of the reasons why we started the online radio station was so I had an outlet for at least one show to do what I wanted uncensored. Everybody knows how bad the social media platforms have gotten. We all know it. And it's been hard on a lot of creators because people that's been with us before long before, you know, today or whatever, years with us, know how we all started out, how we were no-nonsense type of deals. And it's like we're kind of muffled now. So that's the reason why I started that program. Thursdays, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm going to be higher than a kite, man. It is the 420 hour we're going to listen to some good tunes. We're going to be talking some smack. And later on, be ta uh, taking some phone calls from uh, the audience and stuff. 
having a good old time that I couldn't have on YouTube, Facebook, or any of that stuff. But that goes to my other point. A lot of people are scared to talk out about stuff that they believe in because they're afraid of being canceled. That's not me. I ain't afraid of being canceled, trust me. Everybody knows my views on everything. Uh, I've lost a lot of subscribers over my views, but it is what it is. You know, I'm not going to hold back and hide who I am because uh, some person says, you're this or you're racist that. You know what? Go screw yourself. Go, you know, turn on your freaking thumb or something. But that's where this government's going. And bikers have seen it for a long time. A long time, man. They've been going through all this kind of sh crap forever. So we're going to cover this one story before we get into the main. I think it's just terrible what's going on with this one. And it shows the direct result of these damn gang laws. And this comes out of Atlanta. And this is one of the cases we were talking about with the gang enhancement. Weak on evidence, Augusta case test fairness of Georgia's tough gang laws. Now... This guy was picked by the star witness off of a Facebook post. Before the bullets flew, before authorities built their case, and before Maurice Franklin was arrested, Brian Kemp, he's a biggest schluck in the world, I can't stand him, ran for governor in 2018, condemning gangs for terrorizing Georgia neighborhoods. That's how this all starts on political crap. They'll use their terrorizing our neighborhoods. Now, the one who's actually terrorizing our neighborhoods is you politician, actually. The Republican pledged to empower our officials to crush gangs in the court of law. And when he won, state law enforcement started helping local detectives and prosecutors make tough cases. Kemp and his allies pushed for harsher legislation and urged police and prosecutors to send more gang members to prison for a lot longer. Basically meaning, with his campaign pledge there, if you're, say, I don't know, a motorcycle club member down in Georgia, get into a tussle, some things go wrong, even on an assault and battery. What am I talking about? They'll throw the gang enhancement at you. Franklin's arrest, what he faces in court, are consequences of that crusade. 28-year-old father of four with no felony record or prior accusations of violence has been held without bond since September 2019 in a drive-by shooting of an Augusta house that injured no one. He was arrested after the victim, victim, the stars say, wit, our stars witness belief, believed she recognized him from a Facebook page. That's her idea, this guy. Authorities alleged the shooting was gang-related, so the number of charges and potential punishment ballooned. He faces 51 counts and up to 760 years in prison. Oh boy, am I upset. So, this was a drive-by. He was picked out from a Facebook page. Nobody got hurt. And he's facing 760 years in prison. Where that pedophile murderer that we talked about on last episode got off on a technicality, you know, doing half of his sentence at 20 years. Let that sink in. 21 uh, other alleged gang members face similar charges in the case. One of Georgia's harshest gang prosecutions in recent memory. There's a picture of him right there. Uh, he's a restaurant worker, an aspiring musician, denies that he's a gang member or had anything to do with the drive-by shooting, and he could be locked away for life despite serious questions about the evidence against him. 
at the time of the drive-by, Franklin's cell phone data put him at least 20 minutes away from the scene. Detectives didn't interview two alibi witnesses who corroborated the phone records. And the state's key eyewitness, the traumatized victim, changed her story significantly after the arrest. And he's facing how many years for something? Uh, if I was juror, that's enough right there as a uh, reasonable doubt to me. It's summed up right there with them facts right there. And for somebody like me, I know damn well the detectives don't do their damn job. So uh, I would probably be one of them that they sent uh, down the way because uh, I wouldn't be able to be on a jury. Initially, the victim said her ex-boyfriend was one of the shooters. She looked at social media photos of people she believed were connected to him and identified Franklin and his others. Later, she uh, said her ex, ex Ashley wasn't involved, removing the alleged link. <laughs> really? Uh, it's time to release this kid. Unfreaking real. Uh, the AJC shared details of the case with tenured prosecutor and veteran civil rights attorney and professor who spent her career studying gang cases. They said the evidence against Franklin was so weak, prosecutors should have long dropped his charges or at very least re-examined the case. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares, basically, is what it comes down to. And nobody looks at the facts. You know, people hear, oh, gang, he's in a gang. They want to punish him. You know what? That is so unfair, and this happens to so many people all over the country. That's one of the reasons why I support a lot of these gang... Uh, or not the gang, but uh, the criminal justice reforms, because some of this stuff is pretty serious and it needs to be reformed. Problem is, they go around, <laughs> go about it all the wrong way. You know, it's a racist deal. You know what? Get rid of all that racist crap, and maybe everybody can go forward. Uh, but let's get into some uh, biker news real quick. <laughs> Okay, let's go to some good stuff, then we'll go into the main stories today. Biker Dad, oh yeah, Chris Best. Uh, Monday's weather, not too many people are likely thinking about getting out on the road on a motorcycle, but by this weekend, things are looking a lot better for the annual WKRG 5 Ace of Hearts Poker Run. Lots of riders will be itching to get on their bikes after this winter stuff passes. Oh, you guys do not know winter. Come up here right now where it's like 20 below zero, man. 20 below zero with the wind chill here. Uh, the Ace of Hearts Poker Run benefits the American Heart Association. WKRG5 has raised tens of thousands of dollars for the cause to help fight the number one killer in the United States, heart disease. And we always have a good time doing it. Uh, I visited with uh, Harley Davidson of Pensacola, one of the sponsors, asked why they get involved. And he said it's huge for us to be a part of the community events because the biker community loves to pull together for a good cause. That is Ace of Hearts 2021 poker run coming up. Uh, I still laugh about uh, how they cry about the weather. Anyway, the main story of today, Ben Harvey reveals the not-so-sweet uh, reality of bikey gangs on the West Live. Uh, he goes on to say, don't be fooled by the image published on the weekend of the West Australian chief reporter Ben Harvey enjoying a Mr. Whippy with infamous... Uh, W.A. Underworld figure Troy Mer uh, Mercenti, there is nothing sweet about the reality of being in a bikey gang. And there he is right there. That's Serena ice cream. 
as someone who has reported on the activities of bikies in this state for years, Harvey knows better than most what a, uh, such a life entails and told the West Live today, it is also no bed of roses for the police tasked with uh, bringing them to justice. They're like, uh, we're here in the United States. It's more like the mafia and the street gangs and stuff that get all the attention. Yeah, uh, MCs get called gangs and stuff, but n not the attention that uh, Australia or New Zealand gives uh, the clubs over there. I don't. Uh, is it a fascination with them? Is it something that sells papers? You know, let me know that kind of stuff. Maybe us Americans can better understand it because, my God, you know, they're in the newspapers all the damn time over there. Uh, of course, you know, <laughs> you guys can write all damn year uh, where we can here. Anyway. Uh, the reporter heard from some of those police officers after his exclusive interview with the bikey. Uh, of course, they're going to come step up. Uh, the gang uh, crime squad are, without a doubt, the toughest cops that we have on the beat in Western Australia, probably in Australia. Put them down in Chicago just for one weekend on the south and west side. Let's see how tough they are. Uh, they basically bust bikies. That's what they do. They gather intelligent and spend their day and their nights rolling around in uh, cars, making life unbearable for patch members and nominees of our dozen or so bikey squads. There's a podcast that he uh, continues to talk about this on. Uh, you can actually find this, uh, the no sweet uh, reality of bikey gangs. Uh, within the squad is a crack unit uh, gang response team. He really talks more about freaking cops than what he the title of the damn thing is. Uh, the reporter said he had not received any direct feedback from uh, Manchetti or the Mongols, but he has heard the story was read very closely. Stop freaking uh, <laughs> patting yourself on the pecker, man. Uh, he, he, oh, I, you know what? He, you put up a title reveals the not so sweet re reality of bikey gangs, and you talk about the cops. Now, what kind? That's false advertisement, there, man. That's false advertisement. What's wrong with you? Nasty. Uh, you guys just may, you guys blow everything out of proportion over there, man. And I'm talking about clubs and stuff. I believe it was uh, reported out of Australia uh, from an expert that did a study. Only, what is it, 0.001% of the crime in Australia is actually committed by bikies or bikers. That's a pretty low percentage, don't you think, for all the uh, attention that you give them? But I think you guys over there learned from uh, the Americans, uh, SOA and stuff, that the more you publish about that type of lifestyle, the more clicks you're going to get. That's that case here. Let's see if this story is any better. Mikey gangs are, charged, uh, are being changed by recruitments of young violent men. Now, that is something that comes up here in the United States. Uh, a lot has changed within the scene here. Uh, you actually got people that call the younger generation Nike bikers, which means, you know what, they know how to dress, man. They go out there to dress. They dress to kill, <laughs> literally. They like them women out there, man. Uh but they have different attitudes. They bring a more of a street gang approach to uh, an MC, basically, here in the States. You know, not everybody. I'm not saying that, so don't get stupid. I'm just saying that's the kind of stuff, you know, the attitude that some people bring. Uh, they're starting to recruit young men more prone to violence who are looking to get rich quick. Now, that might be the case over in Australia. But a lot of clubs here, you got to remember, there's two distinct type of deals now, man. You got your sport bike rider clubs, which are more popular 
uh, here in the United States for the young ones than, uh, you know, the regular known uh, clubs. Two different scenes now. Uh, outlaw motorcycle gangs are recruiting younger men more prone to violence. Drawn to the gangster image and wanting to get rich quickly, a new study has found. Uh, the AIC has released a study based on two reports that reveal the change in culture within outlaw motorcycle gangs and the effects on members and the support they needed to exit a club. The reports were drawn from the same 39 interviews with former Queensland OMCG members and discovered... It discovered, here we go, a propensity uh, for violence and lack of loyalty among newer members. Man, that seems like, the, man, you guys got the same thing going on over there, uh, well, all over the world, lack of loyalty with the younger ones. It is about making money for a lot of them. Uh, he said the interviews provided a unique insight into the change in nature of OMCG its members, and the consequences of renouncing membership. Now, we actually did a uh, deal yesterday where they can be facing $10,000 in fines, according to that newspaper. Uh, so that could be getting a gangster over there if that's the case. They describe how their former clubs were recruiting younger men who are more prone. How many times you going to say that? Uh, the real culture change in some clubs with more conflict and less loyalty be between members, and this is having a real impact on members who are leaving. The report based on interviews with former Queensland OMCG members covered recruitment, how clubs were managed, their values, norms, and relationships. The other report looked at the support needs of former members and identified the repercussions of exiting the club. I believe we covered that one uh, yesterday. The direct consequences of leaving or being excelled include intimidation, violent assaults, or being stabbed, loss of assets, the payment of large exit fees, and disruption of social networks. Yeah, it's a street gang type of deal that happens right there. Uh, and it said it took him a while to put in security systems, their lights, dog that bites anyone. Uh, former member says, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. It talks about, let's see here, other members spoke about being bashed. Well, the report stated some of the direct financial costs for former members indicated losses of up to 250000 uh and exit fees between five and ten. So... You guys got something going on there in Australia because that kind of stuff, it, it really doesn't happen in the United States, at least as far as I know. I don't know how things have changed out there, uh, but that's something that uh, cops really like pushing over here. Uh, it, most of the time, it's not true. You hear about clubs taking somebody's motorcycle. Maybe in the old days it was like that, but it's not like that now. And you're sure to hell not paying five to $10,000 in fees here in the United States, man. You're just not doing it. So that's the uh, episode 483 for today. Don't forget to go listen to WMMRDB, Motorcycle Madhouse Radio. You can do it uh, on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com or go to our Discord server, listen to it live over there. Download uh, the Zemo app and just put in our station name and it will pop up. You'll have fun, man. So with that, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. <laughs>